Hi, my name is Gabe Weymouth, and I'm going to do a real quick demo on how to use Water Lily and Mackie to run live simulations and visualizations of fluid mechanics on your laptop. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is run this little sample script in Julia. So in terms of like getting started, you should go to the Julia website, download it, look at Mackie and uh, Water Lily's GitHub pages and kind of get all that set up too. Assuming you've got all that, you should be able to follow along with the demo. So the first thing we're doing is we're importing Water Lily and also static arrays because we're gonna use that uh, for the geometry. And we define a little function here that gets the length of uh, a static array. Then the main thing here is this make simulation function. Um, and what that does is it just returns simulation. So sometimes it's good to start with the end. <laughs> so what it does, or with the arguments that go into the simulation, the first argument here is the size of the simulation. So the kind of number of points, x, y, z, the dimensions of the array. So that's defined in terms of this number n, which I'm passing in in default as 2 to the 6th. Um, and it's doing 2n by n by n, so it's going to be twice as long, so kind of a twice-stretched cube. Uh, the next argument is the velocity vector. So it's u in the first direction, and then 0, 0, and u defaulting to 1 also. Okay, then the third is the r, it's the length scale of any geometry inside the flow. Um, so that we're defining as n over 2, so half the size of the smaller dimension of the grid. Then next is nu, the Greek letter nu, which is the kinematic viscosity. And that's defined in terms of the Reynolds number, which we've set to a thousand. And then the next one is probably the most uh, interesting, which is the body. Um, so that's being defined in terms of this auto body function, which takes in a signed distance function and some kind of coordinate map. And then it uses automatic differentiation to get the rest of the properties of the body automatically for you. So all you have to do in Water Lily to immerse any kind of body you want is define a sign distance function to the surface of that body. So there's an example function here, which is for a sphere. Um, so consider any point x, y, z in 3D space, then the distance from the origin to that point we get with the norm. And then if we just subtract r from that value, then if you have a number that's less than r away from the origin, then you'll have a negative sign distance. If it's right on the surface r, then it'll be zero sign distance. And if it's bigger, then it'll be a positive sign distance. And that'll give us the SDF for this sphere, okay? Then the map is something we can do to shift the coordinates around or warp them or whatever we want to do. It's very flexible. Um, in this case, we'll just do a simple example where we shift the center of the sphere. So we take any point x, y, z as an input, and we return the point shifted subtracting off a small amount, so 2 in over 3 in the x direction. So this SA function makes us <laughs> makes a static array uh, with the three components, component one, two, three, okay? So that's it. That's all we need to do to define this body and to define the simulation. So we've already evaluated that. And in order to make a simulation, we just need to call this function and I'll just call it with the default arguments. So the first time you run a function in Julia, it takes a little bit longer because it's compiling the code uh, if we run exactly the same thing again, you can see that it evaluates super fast. Okay, cool. So now we have a simulation. I want to change one thing before we start visualizing, uh, which is that I don't really want to run this simulation on the CPU. I'd rather run it on the GPU because it'll be faster. And to do that, we need to add just two more lines of code. One is we need to say that we're going to use CUDA so that's happened. And then an optional line of code here, which you should do probably do, is to check that CUDA is working. And it is functional. Good. And now all we need to do is make a simulation and we'll use this last argument, the memory argument. So instead of doing the default memory, which is just a regular array, we'll do memory equals 
a CUDA array. And this tells Julia that we want to store the simulation on the GPU instead of the CPU. Again, it needs to recompile, so it'll take a minute. We have a simulation which is on the GPU, which is pretty great. That was awfully easy, right? <laughs> so now running the simulation on the GPU is as easy as calling the sim step function. So that this is exclamation point means that this function is going to modify the argument. So we're going to give it a simulation and it's going to change it. It's going to update it in time. And we also need to give it the end time that we want. So we'll integrate it up to time 0.1 or maybe a little further, 0.2. Uh, and basically what this is, is it's in terms of the velocity and the size of the body. So we're basically saying we want to go 0.2 radiuses forward uh, along the flow. All right. So again, it's going to take a second the first time. It's going to compile the code it needs to, and then it's going to run. Okay, still pretty fast, actually. Uh, and we can check that, yeah, if we don't have the compile step, this code is awfully fast. All right, so now we have a simulation and we run it forward in time. But wait, what did we actually do? <laughs> we want to visualize this. Uh, and that's where Mackie comes in. Um, so we've also got this other file here, which has got a couple of functions that I've defined to help visualize the flow. So we'll include that file. Yeah. Oh, so it says we need to make sure Mackie's in the path. So you could do this a couple different ways, um, but I'll do it by activating the kind of example folder because that's got uh, Mackie in there. And then we'll try that same line again. Good. So that's running. Um, Mackie is a big package and it takes quite a while to load all of it up. Um, so go get a drink of water. All right, we're done. So it's gone through and evaluated these functions. And the first function we're going to use, there's a function here to make a video, which is nice, but we're going to do a live demo, so we don't need it. The first function we want to use is this body mesh function. So that evaluates the sign distance function and it pulls out the zero surface there. Um, so there's a function in GL Mackie that is able to show meshes. So we'll do that. So we'll do body mesh. And that just takes in the simulation. And again, the first time you do this, it's going to take a little while uh, for the compiled code to start up. All right. So here it is. It's popped up an object. It's a little hard to see. So, and also we'd like to show that it's not gonna be that slow ever again. Uh, so let's make it a little more interesting by adding a color How about something pretty like light blue. And you saw that time instantaneous, right? So it's really just the compiling and setup that's slow. Um, as soon as you've done that, then GL is pretty fast. All right, so here's our geometry. It's a quarter of a sphere, just as we want it. And we can see that the center has been shifted back in X, but that in Y and Z, uh, it hasn't. Um, yeah, so this looks good. Sanity check uh, complete. So that's wonderful. But the nice thing about Water Lily is that we can change this super easy. So we can really quickly try something else. So instead of doing the sphere, let's try something a little more advanced just to give you an example. Um, so let's do something that doesn't treat all of the coordinates the same. So we can unpack that uh, XYZ vector into its components using this line. And then let's define the radius R. So that'll be the distance from the X axis. So we can get that just by using the Y and Z components. So that'll give us the radius R. And then we can do a cylinder by just taking the distance to that. So instead of a sphere, which is including that X part, this should return us uh, a new function with a different shape. So let's try it out. So all we need to do is run our simulation again. And it's very fast. And 
we can run our script to look at the geometry again. And that's fast too. Great. And we can see that works. So we have a circular cylinder instead of a sphere now. This also kind of shows off that elongated direction. So this is the full simulation domain, whereas before it was just zoomed in on the geometry. Uh, but this geometry goes forever in the X direction. Uh, that's probably too long. We don't want forever in X. So let's change this one more time. So this gave us a cylinder. But if we combine the cylinder with a plane in the X direction, then we can get a geometry which is uh, a disk. So if you use the X component, and then for the other component, we'll do a little trickery here, uh, <laughs> which is to use the distance R for anything kind of outside the cylinder and anything inside the cylinder will just return zero. And so that'll kind of only give us the part that's due to the plane distance. And we'll give our disk a little bit of thickness Five is fine, so this should give us a disk. Let's try it. Yeah, it worked. Okay, very good. So we get a disk. And that's just what we wanted. So we can see that the disk is basically a combination of a plane and a circular cylinder. Uh, no, no amazing new thing there, but very cool how you can super quick kind of prototype through and visualize this stuff with Mackie really fast and make sure that you're kind of doing stuff right. So that's really cool. Um, and now we can run that simulation. So we already saw how to run it. We just run this forward in time a little bit. Again, it's compiling that and it's running it. And it's done super fast. Actually, it already had compiled it, so that was just runtime. Um, yeah, so now, though, we'd like to see it. Uh, we want to see what's going on in the flow. So there's two parts to that. The first part is that we need to use some kind of function. In this case, oh, we'll actually want the other one, don't we? We'll use this function, flow uh, lambda, that was defined inside that 3D plots, and that just evaluates the lambda2 function, which is built into Water Lily. Um, and what lambda2 tells you is basically, is there anything rotating? So it's looking for vortices, swirls in the flow. So it takes the simulation and it'll return some scalar that's like telling you, yes, there's a bunch of rotation here, or no, there isn't anything. Um, so that's uh, the thing that we're going to visualize. Probably wanted to do that like so. So that's done. So we've already kind of set up the thing that we want to visualize. Now we have to set up the Mackie plot of that thing. Uh, that we could do in a couple steps. The first thing to do is that we want to make an observable. So we're going to run this over and over and over again. We don't want to have to keep making new arrays or calling Mackie kind of plot functions over and over. But if we take that dat and we just apply an observable to it, then what that does is it kind of tags the array so that it keeps checking if things inside have been updated. And if that we update the data now, then it'll also update the flow plot. Or if we update the observable, it'll update the flow plot automatically. We won't have to do it again. So that's good. That's the first thing. Also, I'm using this kind of pipe notation here because I kind of like that for uh, data processing stuff. All right, so that's one. Uh, the second thing we need is to do the actual flow visualization. I'm going to use the contour function um, before we do that. So that's going to take in the observable, and it's going to also take in a color map and some other parameters too. Levels one, so that's we only want one contour. And we'll also be doing the ISO range, 0 0.49. So this is unfortunately the kind of stuff that you just have to play around with a little bit. Um, you can set up observables for all of these little things, and then you can kind of tweak them in real time on the plot. Uh, for now, I'm just going to skip through that. So this is going to work OK, except I can see there is one problem, which is that we haven't defined color map. Um, so let's do that. So the default color map or uh, 
the contour plot is viridus. We can show you what that looks like. There's a two color map function. Yeah, so here it is. And this is fine, except that I kind of want it to go the other way. Uh, and luckily that's pretty easy. I can just reverse it. Okay, so this will be my color map. And now when I run this code, again, it'll compile. <laughs> it'll take a little while, but that was pretty fast. All right, so we're done. Uh, this is our flow. So we've got this uh, solid geometry. And now you can see, again, we can see the whole flow domain. But the only part which is rotating is this little vortex ring, or quarter of a ring, right next to the disk edge. So the flow has come around, and it's peeling off. Uh, and there's a separated flow and a vortex ring right here. And that's already cool, but even cooler is that now that we've set this up, all we need to do is run the simulation forward in time, and it will automatically update everything. Uh, so we'll do that. So here's a teeny little bit of code to do that. So we'll do 500 kind of loops of this. So we'll run the same sim step that we ran before. This time we want to keep updating forward in time, so we'll say sim step. Uh, plus O2. Oh, and actually make this a little more efficient by saying we don't need to remeasure the geometry, make it a little faster. So if the geometry is moving around in space and time, we have to keep remeasuring it, but we know this disk is just going to sit here. And then all we need to do is update the data. So this is kind of the mutating version of that flow plot thing before, so I don't have to make a new array every time. It'll just update it. And this code updates the observable. We don't need to keep remaking a new plot. It'll do that automatically using the observable. All right, let's check it out. Hey, it's working. Cool. So look, this vortex came off, and now it's kind of hovering out behind the flow. So the flow's going. Flow's going a lot faster than this vortex is moving, though. It's kind of stuck behind the wake of the disk. But it's starting to go unstable. So you can see that it's starting to bend and twist, and we're starting to get cool structures into this wake. The wake's starting to break down. Yeah, and look, look at this really funky wake situation we've got going on now here. So that's already done with the 500 steps. Let's do 500 more because it's super fun and gorgeous. So you can see that all evolving, the simulations running out to the end. Uh, but we keep generating this, and we get these structures which shed and then get kind of sucked back in, and there's some of the stuff which is stuck in the wake and some of the stuff which is flowing out along the outside. Um, so even something as simple as a disk has this really cool uh, flow visualization, uh, and there's really neat stuff, and with Water Lily and Mackie, then you can play around with these two things. All right, good luck. <laughs>